Emma's Smile, October 15, 1985. Time has changed us all. We've adapted, moving from island to island, scavenging supplies and learning the lay of this strange land. We've managed to build up a decent stockpile of food and water, for now, at least we're surviving. Emma, now five, has a way of reminding me of my own son. Her curiosity, her innocent questions, and the way her eyes light up when she discovers something new. It's like a mirror to the past. Tommy, at nine, and Jake, at seven, have taken on more responsibilities. They're growing up faster than any child should have to. The islands are strange, though. Supplies and tools vanish without explanation. The kids have started having nightmares, waking up in the middle of the night, screaming about shadows and voices. I've heard them, too. Claire tries to reassure everyone, but I can see the fear in her eyes. We've noticed several wrecks scattered around, but they're often too dangerous to explore. The last time I tried diving to one, a shark nearly took my leg. It's a constant reminder of how precarious our situation is. We can't leave the kids alone for too long, and the risks are high. Emma, in her innocent way, often says things that brings a smile to our faces. Just yesterday, she found a seashell and handed it to me with wise, wide eyes. Logan, will this shell bring us good luck? Her hopeful expression melted my heart. Maybe it will, Emma, I replied, ruffling her hair. Maybe it will. Despite everything, her presence is a balm. She reminds me of my own son, and it's both a comfort and a source of guilt. The memory of my son's death and the near destruction of my marriage haunt me. It took years for my wife and me to rebuild our relationship, and now here I am, torn between the family I lost and the makeshift one I'm trying to protect. But tonight, something happened that brought all those emotions crashing back. We were sitting around the fire and Emma slipped up. She called me dad. The word hit me like a punch to the gut and all the burning pain and guilt surged to the surface. I'm not your dad, I snapped, my voice harsher than I intended. Don't call me that, I'm not your father. Emma's face crumpled in hurt and confusion. Before I could react, Claire was on her feet, anger blazing in her eyes. Logan, how could you? She's just a child. She looks up to you. Emma ran off into the darkness, her small figure disappearing into the night. Panic surged through me, cutting through the haze of anger and guilt. I stood up, my heart pounding. Emma, come back. Claire and I grabbed torches and set off after her. The fear of losing her in the dark gnawing at me. The jungle around us was thick and menacing, every shadow a potential threat. Claire's angry rebukes echoed in my mind as we searched, her words a constant reminder of my failure. Emma, where are you? Claire's voice was strained with worry. As we moved deeper into the jungle, the sounds grew eerier. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig, set my nerves on edge. Then we heard a low menacing growl. My blood ran cold. We found Emma huddled under a tree, but before we could reach her, a pair of Komodo dragons emerged from the shadows, their eyes glinting in the torchlight. I grabbed the nearest weapon, a makeshift spear, and charged at the beast. Rage and fear fueled my every step. Emma, run, I shouted, but she was frozen in terror. All right, welcome back to Project Castaway, everybody. This is Episode 6, we're already at the island that I wanted to come to. So we're going to take a look around here once it gets brighter out. But I want to thank everybody for tuning into the series. You guys have been awesome. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out a ton. Um, the series has been doing pretty well. It's probably my most watched series on the channel so far. So it really means a lot. I really appreciate it. But we're going to search this island once it gets bright out. I hope you guys enjoyed the story that, uh, that I just read. I suck at reading recently. I don't know what's going on. But uh, I'm pretty awful at it. So I hope you guys can just bear with me through that. We're going to go through the rest of uh, Logan Harper's notes as well um, throughout this episode. But we're going to wait till it gets bright so we can actually see what we're doing and then we'll get going. So first things first, on every island that I go to, I chop down a couple trees, make a bed. That way we can sleep if we need to. And so boop, that's done. And then obviously collect the logs, take them back to base. Because I think at the end of this episode we might just build a, uh, a, a dock that we've been, I've been talking about for a while. So we'll end the episode. We'll search this island here. Um, that's the plain island. Uh, we're gonna go out there to that little dinky thing and then there's something clear on the other side of this that you can't see. There's like rocks or something. Let's see if I can run over there and see it real quick. Yeah, see out there? Something clear out there. So we're gonna go visit that as well. Um, we're just gonna make a little, little loop and then we're gonna go back to the main island. Okay, so I was just waiting for it to get bright out, and I was just filling up the log holder here, because it won't let me sleep right now. And I was trying to pick up the um, the palm leaves over there, and I just found spider repellent. So there was a spider repellent blueprint in there that I just randomly picked up. 
So, uh, crafted repellent useful only against spiders, which is good because I hate the spiders. They're awful, they're terrible, they suck. Uh, Kava Kava and Lavender. So, I have not seen Kava Kava, but we've got Lavender, so... Alright, I'm gonna continue just waiting this out, because it won't let me sleep still. Okay, nice and bright now. Yeah, see, I was just chopping these trees down here just to fill those up whenever I found that blueprint, but it was, like, right in this area here. But it didn't show up, like, it, it didn't indicate that there was something here. So, I guess just the notes will have the little notification. So, but alright, let's go ahead and search around this island. I'm gonna pull this out just in case there's spiders. What is this? Something red? Is that coral? Coral? Okay. Cool. So it doesn't really look like there's anything else on this little tiny one here. I mean, there might be, but let's just have a look here. See? No. Not seeing anything. Okay. Just work our way in a circle. Okay. So this one doesn't really look like it was inhabited like the last island that we went to. Like, there doesn't seem to be any little settlements or anything on it, but there, these little nasty guys kill those things. The world could do with less of those. Um, but obviously somebody was here because there was a blueprint. Nothing on the beaches either. Yeah, there's a boat right here. There's something in here. Bottle note, okay. Ancient vase. We'll take this back and set it next to the, uh, our, uh, raft where our bed is right now. So what is this? Ancient vase. Witness to history's blooms, holding secrets of past civilizations within its delicate curves. Very nice. Cool. I wish there was an easier way to transport these. Uh, we'll take a look at these bottle notes as well, because we didn't read the ones from last episode either. Oop. I see you. Caught you that time. <laughs> Suck it. Okay. Is there anything else on here? We're also going to need to take some of these to the plane as well. It's a coca plant. We're going to need some of that. I might grab that before we head out because we need that for the shark repellent. So, oh. Something else here. What do we got? Another bottled note? Cool. Yeah, we're going to take a look at all these bottled notes here in a second. Okay, so I think the last spot is out here. Let's take a look. Take a look-see. Oh, there we go. Blueprint. Oceanic seasoning. Okay, so that's going to be for probably seasoning food. Okay, let's get this back over here. Okay, so oceanic seasoning. Seasoned used to improve fish meat. Okay. Cool. Well, those are neat. I wish those would had, like, a better effect, like status effects, because I tried... I did use the Zephyr seasoning, and it just made the food taste better, I guess. I, I guess. All right, let's look at these bottled notes. Okay, so it looks like this one here is the next one. So it's William's Letter 2, and it was from William Hargrove, the Neptune's Bounty. So this is the second note. This is William Hargrove, still stranded on this godforsaken island. It's been weeks, maybe months, since I last wrote, and our situation has only grown more dire. Our food supplies have dwindled to almost nothing, and fresh water sources are drying up. The land's an eerie curse seems to tighten its grip on us daily. The strange sounds at night have become more frequent, and now some of us claim to hear whispers. Our fires continue to be extinguished without reason, plunging us into darkness. The sense of being watched is overwhelming, and is driving us to the edge of madness. We've made several attempts to build a raft and escape, but the sea is, is relentless. Each time our makeshift vessels are destroyed by the violent waves, hope is fading fast and morale is at an all-time low. We argue more than ever, and some of the men have simply wandered into the jungle never to return. I found more evidence of those who came before us, bones scattered among the trees, rusted tools and scraps of clothing. It's a stark reminder that escape is a distant dream. Still, I hold on to a sliver of hope that this letter might reach someone. If you find this, know that we are desperate. We need help. Please alert the authorities and send a rescue party. 
We cannot hold on much longer, and I fear what will become of us if the torment continues. With fading hope, William Hargrove. So all of these notes and everything is talking about the voices and things like going missing. None of that has happened, but our also we've been keeping our sanity up. So I don't know if our sanity drops that low if we'll start if that stuff will start happening. Maybe we'll have to check that out at some point. So bottled note, I found this note, letter from a missing cargo ship, to whom it may concern. My name is David Carter, and I was the first mate of the cargo ship Ocean Voyager. We set sail with a full load of goods, everything from electronics to clothing, even some crates of exotic fruit. We were making our way across the Pacific when a storm hit. It came out of nowhere. Fierce and unforgiving, the waves were like mountains, and the wind howled like a banshee. We tried to steer through it, but it was no use. The ship was tossed around like a toy, and before we knew it, we were sinking. Packages and crates were scattered everywhere, floating away into the ocean. So that's probably where all the stuff that's washed up on the shore came from. Or most of it, anyway. A lot of my crew didn't make it. I watched them get swallowed by the waves, one by one. I still hear their screams at night. There were a few of us who managed to cling to some debris and make it to a nearby island. But it's been weeks, maybe months, and there's still no sign of rescue. It's strange. You think someone would have come by now. We had a distress signal, and the shipping lanes are usually busy. But it's like we vanished from the map. We've tried everything. We've lit signal fires, spilled out SOS with rocks on the beach, even tried to build a raft. But nothing works. The island is starting to feel like a prison. Food is scarce. Fresh water is running out. We scavenge what we can, but it's not enough. The exotic fruit from the cargo is long gone, and we're left with whatever we can catch or find. I've seen some of the packages wash up on shore. Random islands that are of no use to us. Laptops with no power, designer clothes that offer no warmth, and a crate of rubber ducks. It's almost laughable. The useless things that have survived when we were struggling to stay alive. Hope is fading. Every day is a struggle to survive, and every night is a battle against despair. I'm starting to think no one is coming for us. Maybe we've been forgotten, or maybe there's something else going on that I can't understand. All I know is that it's getting harder to keep going. If someone finds us, please know that we tried. We fought to survive, but sometimes it feels like the ocean itself is against us. If you're reading this, maybe there's still a chance for rescue. But for me, hope is a dwindling flame, and I'm not sure how much longer I can keep it burning. Okay. So, so many people have been stranded out here and have not been rescued, which makes me feel like something more is going on out here. Obviously, Morden Paul, that whole situation. Um, but a lot of this stuff was probably from before they were out here. So there's got to be something else going on that's causing people to go missing, ships to go missing, and people not to be rescued. But I just don't, I haven't seen any evidence other than what we've heard from our uncle in the tapes of anything sinister other than Morden Pole. So this is so strange. What is this? Is this like an underwater tree? What? Very confused. Very, very confused. Um, okay. Can I dive? What is going on down here? an old car. Golden cup. Okay. Well, let's get back. Oh gosh. No, 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 no. So many sharks. So many sharks. So many sharks. So many sharks. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. If they attack me again, I'm dead. Need the shark repellent for this kind of garbage. Come on. Get on. Get on. Oh. Oh. Okay. I don't have any heals on me. No. Okay, let's uh, have a couple of these. That might help. And can I make... Uh, wait, where's it at? Here. I don't know if that's really going to help us much, but okay. We'll have to keep an eye out for more stuff like this, I guess. Can I go through this? Well, let me just... It's not going to let me go through it. Damn. That sucks. Can I turn? Can I turn? Slowly. Come on. Come on. I don't want to have to get out and push. I don't have the health for that. Come on, come on, come on, come on, push, 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 push. Ow, 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 ow. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. I am so close to death. I am so close to death. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Come on, turn, 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 turn. We're not bleeding, so that's good. 
Okay. We have one more. That really does not help us at all. Seagull beak, I don't need that. Will this stay on here? It's going to glitch off at some point. But we'll try to get this back to, to our, <laughs> our island with this, I guess. Uh, I need some aloe. Do I not have any aloe? I don't think... I thought I picked some up. No, that's for yucca. Okay. Well, that sucks. Okay. We've made it here to this island. And um, while we're waiting for my health to regenerate, I'm going to go ahead and just read another note. Because, um, yeah. I don't want to jump out here and die immediately to something that's on the island. Because the last island didn't have any jaguars or anything. We're really far away from our home island. but uh, So we're going to go ahead and just read another one of these bottled notes real quick. All right, Blakewood Chronicles 2. This is the last one. Day 84. We have lost sight of the other two ships. The storms have separated us and we're now alone in the vast expanse of the ocean. The crew is on edge and morale is at an all-time low. The food and fresh water are running out. The sickness hath begun to sp spread among the men. Henry's lifeless body still hangs in the cage, a grim reminder of our dire situation. Day 102. The nights are the worst. Strange noises echo from the depths of the ship and shadows dance in the corners of our vision. Some men claim to see apparitions, the ghosts of those lost to the sea. Superstitions run rampant, and I can feel the grip of madness tightening around us. Day 126. Desperation hath driven some of the crew to the brink of insanity. They speak of curses and sea monsters, of the wrath of the unknown for daring to venture into forbidden waters. I try to maintain order, but it is a losing battle. The once loyal crew hath become a band of frightened superstitious men. Day 135. We spotted land. A small island appears on the horizon, and with it, a glimmer of hope. The men cheer, but I remain cautious. We know nothing of this place or its dangers. As we approach, I pray it offers the refuge and resources we so desperately need. Day 150. The island is both a blessing and a curse. We have found fresh water and some food, but it's not enough to sustain us for long. The men are relentless. The dreams of riches replaced by the stark reality of survival. Some have taken to exploring the island, but there is an unsettling presence here. We have found remnants of previous inhabitants, tools, pottery, and graves. Day 161. We have come to the grim realization that we are not the first to be stranded here. The island is littered with the remains of those who came before us. Their bones tell a tale of desperation and death. It is as if this island is a trap, a graveyard for lost souls. The men's morale is shattered, and I fear it is only a matter of time before they turn on each other again. Day 171. In mine final entry, I record the last vestiges of hope finding, fading from mine heart. Our supplies are nearly gone, and the men have become hollow shells of their former selves. We are trapped in this purgatory, unable to find a way out. If anyone finds this journal, know that we sought the riches of the fabled lands, but found only death and despair. The voyage hath become, with such promise, hath ended in a tragedy. Remember us. Not as foolish adventurers, but as men who dare to dream and pay the ultimate price. Captain Edward Blackwood. All right. Cool. Oh, there's a note over here. Interesting. wonder what this is doing clear out here. Sticky note. Radio tower! Oh, why are they all the way out here? Stranger occurrences. Man, five pages. Okay, cool. April 10th, 1985. Another two weeks have passed and the island's mysteries are only deepening. Sam and I have been spending more time investigating the carvings on the rocks. We found more of them, scattered around different parts of the shore. They're intricate, most almost like a language or code. Someone or something was here long before Mordenpole showed up. Yesterday we stumbled on an old overgrowth, overgrown path that led us to a hidden cave. Inside we found remnants of what looked like a camp, rusted tools, tattered clothing, and strange artifacts. One of the artifacts was a small, intricate carved stone that seemed to emit a faint glow. We took it back to the ship to examine it further, but it disappeared overnight. The supervisors have been acting even more suspicious. They've increased their patrols and it feels like they're watching us more closely. We've had to be extra careful with our investigations, keeping our findings hidden and our conversations hushed. The food situation remains dire. Our little garden is struggling, but it's a small beacon of hope. We've been supplementing our meals with whatever we can scavenge from the island, but it's not enough. The lack of proper nutrition is, nutrition is taking its toll on everyone. People are getting weaker, more irritable. It's like the island itself is draining our strength. Marcus, the colleague who wandered off a couple weeks ago, has been having strange dreams. He says he sees figures in the darkness, whispering to him. He's not the only one. Several others have reported similar experiences. The supervisors dismiss it as stress and overwork. I can't shake the feeling that there's more to it. 
Sam and I have decided to keep a closer watch on Marcus. If there's something influencing him, we need to know. We've also been discreetly questioning other crew members, trying to gather more information without raising suspicion. The more we uncover, the more I'm convinced that Mordenpole knew exactly what they were getting into. The island isn't just a resource extraction site. It's hiding something much bigger, something they don't want the world to know. For now, we'll keep digging, keep documenting. Every piece of the puzzle brings us one step closer to the truth, but the island is fighting back, and I fear we're running out of time. We need to find a way off this rock before it's too late. There's a digit at the end of the note. One. Okay, cool. So we got three of the six. What's this? Oh, nice. Look at that. Oh, we need to read the uh, read the thing for these. All right. I promise I want to explore some more before we continue reading. Um, so we found the golden cup. A golden cup brought thought to belong to Genghis Kong's collection, lost during a pirate raid on transit to the British Museum. Nice. And then the ancient saucer, an ancient Nyan artifact. Okay, cool. So yeah, let's have a look around the island. We're almost, uh, I think, three quarters of the way healed. So we shouldn't die immediately if something happens. There's something else here. What do we have? Okay, so it's another radio tower. Cool. So we might actually find them all out here. I really thought that they were going to be all on the other island, but I'm glad we didn't stop our search there. Oh, blueprint right here. Nice. Plain fuel tank. Ooh, yes. Cool. Two fuel drums. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, there's something out here as well. What's this? Bottle note, pirate flag. Another pirate flag. Another pirate flag. Jeez. Pirate flags everywhere. Okay, that looked like something. Okay, let's take a look under this rock here. And this bin. Some cloth. We'll take that just in case we need it for... Uh, eh. Bandages. Yep. Bandages. Bandages. So it doesn't look like there's anything deadly here. So that's good. Something else here. Is that another bottled note? Yep. Okay. So many notes to read. So many notes to read. So we got two more bottled notes. We've got one more radio tower note to read. Um, there's a blueprint right here. Nice. Hornet repellent. Nice. That's good. Those things don't really do much damage. I feel like the game needs to add more to make survival a little bit harder. Because as of right now, it's really not that difficult. So what's this? Elite crab trap. Elite bird snare yeah we really don't need those food and stuff is not that hard to come by all right we're climbing up here climbing up here boys girls oh look at that advanced crab cage cool thank you thank you for all the crab cages and stuff i mean we'll probably build everything eventually just to see it but i want to do a building episode maybe we won't build the the uh, dock in this episode. Maybe next episode we'll just do a building episode. That way we can kind of chill on the story before I accidentally beat the game all at once. Even though it's going to be extremely difficult to get all of the parts that we need. Also, I need to know where to build the plane at. I assume that we're going to find something. Is there nothing up here? Oh, come on. There's got to be something up here, right? No? Not another Wilson just hiding somewhere? Oh, don't die. Don't, eh. Okay, cool. Nothing. Alright, well, that sucks. Okay. So. Ow! Oh, my ankles. Okay, yeah, that looks like everything on this island. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and head back. You know what, let's go ahead and read the other uh, radio tower note here. Desperation and Discovery, May 1st, 1985. Another two weeks and the situation is becoming more dire by the day. Sam and I have been discreetly working on deciphering the carvings and investigating the strange occurrences, but the island seems to be fighting us at every turn. We've managed to make some progress with the carvings. They seem to tell a story. Something about the island's history and perhaps a warning. We've documented as much as we can, but it's slow going. The more we uncover, the more questions arise. Who created these carvings and why? The cave we discovered has 
become a focal point of our investigations. We found more artifacts, some of which seemed to have strange properties. The carved stone we found earlier reappeared mysteriously after disappearing, this time in a different part of the cave. It's like the island is toying with us. The supervisors have become increasingly hostile. They've started conducting random searches of our quarters and interrogating crew members. Sam and I have had to hide our findings carefully, stashing them in places we only we know about. The tension is palpable, and it feels like powder, a powder keg ready to explode. Our garden has yielded a small harvest, but it's barely enough to supplement our meager rations. The crew's health is deteriorating, and morale is at an all-time low. People are becoming desperate. There have been fights over food, and some have started talking about trying to escape on makeshift rafts. It's a suicide mission, but the desperation is real. Marcus's condition has worsened. He has become withdrawn, almost catatonic at times. The dreams he described have become more vivid, more disturbing. He talks about figures in the darkness, whispering secrets about the island. We've tried to help him, but it's like he's slipping away. Despite everything, Sam and I remain determined. We started mapping out potential escape routes, marking places we could gather supplies and avoid the supervisors. It's a long shot, but it's all we have. We can't let Mordenpole bury the truth of this island. In our latest excursion, we discovered something that might be a game changer. Deep in the cave, hidden behind a false wall, we found a journal. It's written in a language we don't fully understand, but some of the symbols match the carvings we've been studying. This journal might hold the key to everything the island secrets, the strange occurrences, and maybe even a way out. It's another one on there. Okay. Cool. I need to sleep. So I'm going to go ahead and make a bed. Sleep. And we're going to probably head back. Um, I don't know where the last... So we got, what, four of them? Four of the notes? Yeah, so we got one, two, three, four, zero, three, one, one. So we're going to need two more digits. So... I'm going to go ahead and make a bed, get some sleep, and then we're going to head out. I want to try to find the rest of these radio tower notes in this episode. Because I need to see what's in that damn thing. So I'm thinking that we might, instead of going back home first, I think we're going to hit up the island that's on the other side of the plain island. The island that we found Wilson on the first time. I think that was episode two. I want to go back there because now that we have the notifications... They've updated the game to where we can actually see where the notes and stuff are. I want to go back to that island because I haven't been back since. And I'm hoping, I'm, I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that there are more radio tower notes over there. So we're going to head there first and then we'll go back to base. And see what we do from there. Hopefully we can figure out the code. Hopefully we can find those notes and then we can open up the box. That would be fan freaking tastic. Okay, we're approaching the island now, so I'm going to go ahead and just read this while we're floating. It's Claire's letter to my dearest Emma. You were a light in our darkest times, a beacon of hope and joy. From the moment I met you, I thought of you as my own daughter. Your laughter, your curiosity, and your boundless energy brought life to our weary hearts. I remember how you used to find beauty in the smallest things, a seashell, a flower, the way the sun set over the ocean. You taught me to see the world through the eyes of a child to find wonder and magic even in the midst of despair. I loved you as if you were my own, and in my heart, you were. I will never forget the way you called me mom, the way you held my hand, the way you trusted me to keep you safe. It breaks my heart that I couldn't protect you. Uh-oh. You stay here. That I couldn't save you from the cruel, cruel fate that took you away from us. Every night I whisper your name to the stars, hoping that somehow you can hear me. I miss you so much, my sweet girl. I miss your hugs, your kisses, your endless questions about the world. I miss the way you made everything seem brighter, even when we were surrounded by darkness. I carry you with me, Emma, in my heart, in my thoughts, in every breath I take. You are a part of me, and I will never let you go. I promise to keep your memory alive, to remember the love and joy you brought into our lives. You will always be my daughter, and I will always be your mother. Until we meet again, my precious Emma, know that I love you more than words can ever express. You are my sunshine, my angel, my heart, with all my love mom so claire was the same woman from uh is it logan harper's i believe so let's check claire yep it's the same woman all right and emma so that means emma died uh, it's great kind of ruined the rest of those notes for us but that's okay all right so we are here let's take a look around See if we can find anything. Oh, there's something right here. Okay. 
Sweet. Radio tower note. I knew it. I knew it. Okay, so let's take a look at these. The radio tower. Chaos. June 15th, 1985. Everything was descended into chaos. Sam and I were discovered and it's all gone to hell. It started when a routine inspection of the platform tower turned into a nightmare. The tower was gone, vanished into thin air, along with half the crew who's, who were stationed there. Entire islands that were visible just the day before had disappeared without a trace. Panic spread like wildfire. The supervisors tried to contain the situation, but fear and frustration boiled over. People were desperate for answers to survive. During the commotion, a riot broke out. One of the crew members driven mad by the stress killed a supervisor. The other supervisor, in a panic, started shooting to defend himself. It was pure chaos. People running, screaming, fighting. The smell of gunpowder and blood filled the air. Sam and I knew we had to get out. In the midst of the madness, we managed to sneak away from the main camp and head for the shore. We've decided to take our chances on our own. Staying with the group is no longer an option. It's too dangerous, too unpredictable. We found a small secluded cove where we set up a makeshift camp. It's not much, but it's safer than being in the middle of that insanity. We brought what supplies we could carry, but it won't last long. We need to find more, a more permanent solution if we're going to survive. The island is changing, becoming more unpredictable. We've seen strange lights in the distance and heard noises that don't belong. It's like the island itself is alive, shifting and morphing. We don't know what's causing it, but we need to stay vigilant. Despite the chaos, we're still determined to uncover the truth. We've hidden the old journal and our notes in a secure spot in our new camp. Every night we pour over the journal, trying to decipher its secrets. It's slowly going, but we're making progress. Marcus didn't make it out with us. I fear for his safety, but there was no way to reach him in the chaos. I hope he finds a way to survive. We'll keep an eye out for him, but right now, we need to focus on staying alive. There's a digit. Uh, seven. Cool. So we only need one more of those. So I assume it's going to be on this island. I assume, I assume, I assume, because this one was here. It wouldn't make sense if there was only one. You know what I'm saying? I think we might have found it. Why are you down here? Interesting. Full code in the journal. Come here, Sharky. I need your meat. Give me your goods. Cool. Killed a shark. So we found the full radio tower code. Sweet. All right, let's go ahead and just read this last one here. All right, alone. June 23rd, 1985. Sam and I managed to find the island with a platform tower. It was badly damaged by the storms, but it was still standing. While scavenging for materials, we discovered an abandoned ship that had drifted near us. After two long months, we were able to repair it and make it functional. We started to believe that our escape plan was within our grasps. My goal was to get out of here and expose Mordenpold's twisted secrets. During our scavenging trips, we found various wrecks scattered through the region, evidence of countless failed attempts to escape. Random objects, some mundane and some bizarre, have been washing up on shore. Things that don't make any sense. Sam has become more captivated by the mystery of this place. I, on the other hand, try to focus solely on repairing the tower and preparing for our escape. Without Sam, I would have lost my sanity long ago. I don't even know how long we've been here anymore. Could be months, could be years. Sam had a strange dream last night. He woke up at the breakthrough, deciphering the old journal. The symbols and carvings we've been studying seemed to click for him, but our progress came at a cost. We got into a heated argument while running low on food. Sam wanted to follow the direction he saw in his dream, convinced it would lead us to something crucial. I insisted we head towards the crash site I identified to gather more oil to power our trip back home. We set out on the boat, tensions high. As fate would have it, we got caught in a violent storm. The boat was wrecked, and in the chaos, Sam was swept away from me. His last words shouted over the roar of the waves were, I got it. I think I got it. I know what Morden Pole is after, before he drifted out of sight. I never saw him again. Since then, I've developed a paralyzing fear of the sea. I kept waiting, hoping against hope that Sam or someone else might drift ashore. But the days turned into weeks, and my hope fades. I curse my own weakness and hate what I've become. The only thing that keeps me going now is the thought of helping those who might come after me. I decided to leave behind what I can, notes, maps, and whatever supplies I manage to gather. I'll do everything in my power to aid any unfortunate soul who ends up on this godforsaken island. Morden Pole's secrets must be exposed, and I pray that someone stronger than me will find a way to do it. So eight. Okay, so the code 031178. All right, let's go. I'm gonna take this rock with us. It's a lucky rock, I don't know why, but we're taking it with us. Let's get back. Let's open up this box. I'm so excited to see what's in here. Hopefully it'll help us get to 
or I don't mean crap. Honestly, this it might just be bug repellent, but hey, here we are. Also, I want to know what Morden Pole is doing, and all these strange carvings and stuff that they've talked about. I have yet to see, so I don't know if there's an island that we just don't know about yet. But I don't see anything. He did just say that he washed up on this shore in the last note, so or not this shore, but the one with the radio tower. So maybe there are other islands that we have yet to be to. Uh, yet, have we have yet to be to <laughs> that we have yet been to. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can figure it out. Uh oh. Somebody stole our, our gold cup. Um I don't know where it went. It was on the ship. The boat. Oh. What are you doing under there? Interesting. Okay. <laughs> I don't really understand that, but here we are. I grabbed some sheets of metal so we can actually make that, um, the, uh, the, 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 the holder for all of the bottled notes. The wine rack for bottled notes. Because, uh, we need a place to store them bad boys, and we needed one more, so I just loaded up on those before we left. So, we're getting turned around. Old Bessie here. She's a thick one. She takes a second to get turned around. Also, I think with stuff that doesn't have an actual holder on the raft, it makes it go a lot slower. So, the trips take a while. So, we'll see you in about 7 to 12 minutes. I'm sailing away. Sailing open course for the virgin seed. Do, 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 do. I have a golden cup to accompany me. And to poop in. I'm tired of pooping on the ground. All right, we have made it back. Let's drop this stuff off. And we're going to head up there to see. Oh, I put down Timmy's hat in the photo in there. That's why those are showing up. Uh, they're taking up space in my inventory. My inventory. Water, what are you doing, water? Oh, no, step water. Okay. So we're going to. They said. Um, he said we're going to need six of these. So what do we have now? We've got we've got four. We would have five, but <laughs> that one freaking yeeted through the map. Okay, I'm gonna drop stuff off, then we're gonna head up to the top there and open up the box. Okay, let's take the nice long trek up here. I slept a little bit because we we're getting a little tired. Um, it gets dark at six o'clock uh, in the evening five to six o'clock which is strange but okay i guess that's just the way it works around here um so yeah let's get up here and see what this box has for us okay so zero three one one seven eight zero three one one seven eight sticky note congratulations on making it this far if you're reading this, you've proven to be a true survivor. This GPS radar will help you keep track of the tower in your current location. It's not much, but it's a lifeline. As my last wish, I ask you to find the remains of my best friend, Sam Reynolds. He's out there somewhere. With him, you'll find special GPS satellites. These devices can be placed anywhere to help you track down essential resources and navigate the treacherous island. They will guide you just as Sam guided me. Good luck. May these tools help you uncover the truth and find your way to safety. Can use GPS radar to check the selection wheel. Take player, journal, backpack, GPS radar. Okay. Ooh, so we can use this to track stuff down. Oh my gosh. Dude, that's going to be so handy. Of course, you know, we can typically find our way back here, but in case we decide to just yeet off into the distance, you know, we can actually figure out, uh, figure our way back. So, all right, that's what we're going to call this episode. We got the GPS tracker. That is pretty stinking awesome. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Next episode, we are going to do some building. We've got all sorts of resources down there, so we might as well put them to, to use. 
We're gonna build that uh, that wine or the wine bottle bottle note collector. We'll finish reading all the notes that we've got, and we will go ahead and build that dock that I've been wanting to build. I don't know why. I think a dock just makes sense. It's all right, and we might actually go out to the shipwreck too. Maybe we'll build a dock, then go to the shipwreck. That'll be fun. Okay. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have been enjoying this series. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.